Hello, Dr. Ron England he again here, and this is video two of the same video that I've shot before, which is the calculation of a bearing in an azimuth, or a, be I mean a bearing in a distance. And uh, this time I'm going to be doing it with the environment that the students will be using in the class, which is a spider environment, and looking at this from a slightly different perspective of not writing, trying to write an executable program that you're going to have inputs and outputs um, that are input by the user as you go, but actually the calculational programming that most of you will be doing using Python. So first, we're using the Anaconda distribution, and we're using a spider, which is right here. You can see spider um, up in the upper left-hand corner is um, the IDE, basically the editor, but the IDE that we're going to be using. Also, while we're looking at it, um, the we're going to well, let's look at the problem now next so the problem that we're going to be solving because really all in all of these situations you're going to be solving specific problems so in the case of the problem that we're solving now it's going to be this um, looking at finding the bearing and distance between two points on a map and in the case of both points we're going to have the bearings and the disk, the, well, we're going to have the UTM coordinates, and we have to figure out the bearing and the distance. So we can now return back to our spider editor. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to use to do this is the math library. So we're going to import that. And so I'm going to start with import math as my first statement. Now, to do this correctly, um, and actually see if it says... Okay, so it tells me, and I want you to note this. See, this is math imported but, but unused. That's the nice thing about the, uh, this environment is it does that for you. It tells you if you're not using this. There's a whole lot of messages that you're going to be able to get um, that will be useful to you. Next, to do this correctly, I really should be creating a function that takes the information in and outputs what we want. So let's do that. Let's first do one that does the distance. So... Um, we're going we're gonna to create a function, and we're going to call the function calculate distance. And that function is going to get four inputs, the x, y of one point and the x, y of the other point. In the case of map, it's called north and, northing and easting. So the easting is, um, is going to be the, um, the x, and the northing is going to be the y. So we're going to say... Um, we're going to call it N1, E1, N2, E2. So the northing and easting of both of the points. And once I hit enter, notice that it gets tabbed over by one because that's how Python keeps track of what's inside a function. It actually doesn't have a colons or brackets. It knows it by the indentation. So, the, so this is a function whose purpose is to calculate distance. So what we can do is we can now say, you know what, how do you calculate the distance? Well, this one's relatively easy um, <clears throat> because it really is just the differences here. Um, basically, n1 minus n2 squared plus e1 minus e2 squared, square root of the, both of those. So I can return the square root of those differences. So let's just do n1 minus n2 and let's square that plus e1 minus e2 and we can square that and notice that I've got a return there and that return and I'm going to go ahead and put a space in here just to make it look good so what I've done is I've created a function, and in the function I actually just directly send, I, I just directly do the calculation. And to go ahead and compile that function, I just highlight them both, control enter, and that's going to put that into memory. And if you look over here, you can see that it actually uh, showed in the Python window, the, con uh, the console window, hey, look what it did. Now, how would I use that? Well, let's just for an example, Let's do it with some numbers, okay? So I can call this, let's say D is equal to calculate distance. And let's just put some numbers in. 
0, 0 to 1, 1. And if I take that and I control enter that, it's going to do the calculation. Um, notice that um, down here I got the name error, math is not defined. Well, the reason that the name the math is not defined is because I never actually did the import of the math. So I have to come over here and import the math. And now you'll see down here that it did import math. So I basically had to highlight and hit control enter, control enter here. And I'll go ahead and scroll this up so you can see it. And it doesn't show you the output of D here. I would for that I would have to do this. I would have to, I can, and I can watch this. I can do this in both places. I can say print D, which will give you the number. But I also have a variable explorer in my console, in my in my spider, which I can set to either file explorer or variable explorer, and I can actually see the value of D because I set D equal to this calculate distance. All right, well, that's all fine and dandy. I can see that I can print D down here. I can see that I can see it up here. Or I could even have put print D here and then done both of these. And it would have put the output over here. So you can see multiple ways to do the same thing. Now, <clears throat> what about calculating the bearing? So I'm going to bring... Um, Let's look a little bit, I want to look a little bit about this concept of UTM coordinates because as I'm teaching you how to do the programming, it's also kind of important to see this concept of UTM coordinates. Um, you would want to look this up. If you're doing work with UTM coordinates, because basically UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator, is a way of showing a con a basically a round surface as a flat surface that has... Um, um, you basically distances. So in other words, this is gridded out. And the way the grids work, it's kind of really nice to know. If you look down here really tight, or down here where you can see this, it's got the 706. That is one of the bigger um, sections. And the 832, well, it actually is a number in meters. 706, 832, and over here it's 4344, 683, which basically in this case is how far it is to the east. And maps are gridded off in one kilometer chunks. So each of these 706, 707 would be one kilometer away from 706 to the east. And 4344, well, 4344 4, 4, 4, 4, 4 would have the next one up would be 4345. 4, and what that allows you to do is to look for points within there on any level level of accuracy. Well, the level of accuracy in this case is one meter. So 832 means you're 832 meters from, to the east, from the 706 grid line. And the 683 means you're 683 meters north of the 4344 grid line. And even notice that the grid lines are broken up into kind of little chunks here. That 4344, four, four, that the 43 is little and the 44 four is big. Because those are broken up into 100 and, and meter chunks. So it allows you to kind of narrow in on things. All right, so now let's go back to our two points that we had. And let's think about uh, what we want to do here. Okay, if I want to go from this point to this point, and this would be taking a bearing from an intersection of two roads to try to find something that was, in this case, is out in a marsh. Well, to do that, I need those UTM coordinates to get the bearing. And it is very common. Now, let's look at a little bit at the concept of bearings and distances. This is a um, basically an azimuth protractor, follows exactly a compass, and due north is 0, due east is 90, due south is 180, and due west is 270. And bearings are measured as you go, in this case, clockwise around the compass. Okay, so a bearing of, of 50 degrees would be in that direction. Okay, kind of easy stuff to work with right there. Um, hopefully most people understand at least a little bit of the concept. What I want to do is I want to calc I want to have a function that calculates the bearing. So I'm going to make a function calculate bearing. 
And I'm going to have the same four inputs, N1, E1, N2, E2. And I'm going to hit put the colon in there, and notice it now goes to here. Now, this one's a little bit more complex because I've got different scenarios. I actually have to break this up into four quadrants to be able to do this. So in other words, I'm going to use the tangent because if I had a, if I had a, from here, let's say to here, I have, a, I have a, a, a direction and angle, and I put this angle in here, the tangent of that is going to be the, the northing over the easting. So that's pretty straightforward stuff to do as far as the, um, the, the trigonometry is concerned, but I've got four quadrants to work with. So let's do this. Let's just right off the bat say um, if, it, well, let's first do this. Let's do the, let's say bearing is equal to zero. So that way I actually have a value that I'm starting with. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and say if. Now, in the case of this, um, you can tell what quadrant you're in just by looking at whether n1 is greater than n2. In this case, if n2 is greater than n1, then I know I'm in the northern quadrant, and I've got to do the easting quadrant. Well, if e2 is greater than e1, I know that I'm in that quadrant. The problem is if I do it this way, I, I'm going to have to go back and make some changes. So what I'm going to actually do here I'm going to nest the ifs. So as you can see, I'm making some changes. Note. And now, look, I got two levels of indentation there. Well, the, um, if this is the case, then how do I get the, um, how do I get the bearing? Well, B is simply going to be equal to the, the arc tangent. And I, I'm going to kind of guess that you guys can do the, the mathematics here, arc tangent. And in this case, the arc tangent is going to have to be, well, what is that arc tangent? It's the differences in those values. So you're looking at n2 minus n1 over e2 minus e1. And now I'm going to jump all the way out and I'm going to return that B. Now, if you're writing this program for all the different directions that you could possibly have, you've got to handle the scenario of E2 being less than E1. Okay, so all those are scenarios you've got to be able to handle. Now, what do I do here? I've got, let me make sure I've got everything closed. It says, oh yeah, I'm missing one parenthesis. And I could sit, I could tell that I was missing a parenthesis because over there I was getting an X. It was telling me I had a syntax error. So now I can compile this, control enter, and I can call it. So uh, I'm going to do the bearing. Now notice this B is inside the function. It's got local scope. This B is outside the function. It's got global scope. They're not the same B. Now, if I were to go 0, 0, 1, 1, those two that I had before, okay, the bearing itself is now 0.785. Well, the thing with that is, is that that bearing is going to be in radians. So you're going to have to do a, uh, you're going to have to do the, you're going to have to do a bearings to radians. And I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I think it's like 53 um, is the, roughly, but you know what, I can easily look that up um, and I can say what is bearing, I'm, I'm over on the side, bearings to, or radians to bearings to degrees, so radians to degrees, 57.2958. So let's just multiply this times 57.2958 and I should be able to now, notice that I just made a change to the function. I've got to recompile the function, and then I and then I can if I run this again, and now the distance. If now if you look over here, you'll see that the um, is 45 degrees, which is kind of what you would have expected it to be, uh, 45 degrees. And I can do let's say we wanted to do instead of zero zero to one one, we were going let's say um, 
<clears throat> zero, zero to um, a number that was, let's say the X was less than one. Um, so the, the easting was less than 1.5. Notice I just made a change to that. I can now do this and run it again. And now you notice that, that that angle is 26. It's what you would have expected to happen. So to do this now with actual real UTM coordinates, I need to know what those two UTM coordinates are. So let's pull those guys up. Now I'm bringing here the little map that says, oh, look, here is the, the bearing and the distance. That, uh, actually, here's the UTM coordinates of my first point so let's go over here and let's say let's just call this b2 is equal to calculate bearing and um, let's pull that pull that number up here and um, it's going to be hang on just a second there it is and uh oops i got it up twice here i don't need it twice um I'm just going to set this to the side. You can see it right there. 0454947321293. Oh, sorry, 832. I'm going to move that to the side so I can actually put those two numbers in. But I'm only going to put in the last four digits. 947 and 832. And the reason is that if the if the other digits of the second point don't cross one of those boundaries and in this case they do not cross one of the grid lines it doesn't matter that you don't need all the accuracy you only need the digits that are the most that are the closest so in this case it's um, it's going to be 989 and 948 I'm looking at those numbers 948 and oops need a comma there and if I do that, now you can actually see that the uh, bearing of B2 is 19.9 degrees, which looks about right. And you could also do this with the you could also do this with the distance. So let's go up here and take this down here and copy it down here. And uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna do a little bit of copying and pasting to make my life a little easier D2 because those numbers are right there. And Let's just put those into here. And now if I run that, my D2, and D2 is now up there, so it's 123 meters. So you're looking at 123 meters at a bearing of 19.9 degrees. Yeah, this is really isn't that terribly hard, but you know what? I hate the fact that I have to do, I really want the distance and the bearing both. So you know what? I'm going to write a third function here. That gives me both. I'm going to take my calculate bearing and I'm going to change that to calculate both. And there's the B. And notice you're not getting all four quadrants because guess what? That's your homework. So it makes no point, no point in doing that. And then I'm going to actually add the line from the calculate distance up here. But I'm going to actually, in this case, I'm not going to, I'm not going to return that. I'm going to say D equals math square root of n1 so the math of the square root so now i've actually got the b which is the bearing and i got the d which is the distance and i'm going to return them both and i'm going to have this i'm going to go return okay so now both of those are in there kind of a unique function of python the fact that i can return both and now i can go now do re remember think about that you're going to have to remember both of these D, I've got the, it returns the distance and the bearing. So let's just do D2, comma, B2. Oh, wait, I can't do that because uh, calculate bearing. That makes no sense. There, I have a function called calculate both. And it calculated both. And both the numbers are up there. So in this case, wow, I really had this thing where I wanted both of them there. And now I don't have to call both functions to get both the distance and the bearings. I can put them all into one function. So that is where I'm going to stop with this. There's a whole lot of information I gave to you out there that you're going to need to digest. Writing functions, using the, you know, using the spider editor, the mathematical case. All these things are pretty awesome. But you can see I can do really fast and dirty calculations quickly with Python.
And this is the gist of programming in the engineering world. You're not writing programs for other people to use. You're writing programs for you and a small group of people to use, but you can do really quick calculations with this. So anyway, this also should help you out with homework number one. Thanks and bye.